Hey guys, what's up? It's the Electrical Code Coach. Let's get to it. We're out here grinding. Today we're going to bring you the top 10 exam prep tips that you need to know and do in practice. No matter how long you've been doing electrical work, when you get ready to get your license, doesn't matter if you've been doing it two years or 35 years, there's a core set of stuff that you have to study and a process that you have to do. It just is what it is. So today we're just going to talk about some 10 tips that you can use when you are testing and getting ready to get your license, no matter if it's an inspector certification or if it is your journeyman's or master's cards or whatever that license looks like in your state. So if you don't know me, I'm the electrical code coach. I'm here just to help you win. I just want to see you win. I built a 10 week program that will take you from opening up the code book to complex load calculations. Nothing in this industry is perfect, but I hope that what we're doing can help more people than anyone else. I'm offering it to you absolutely for free. So go check that out. It's in the playlist, you know, how to become a licensed electrician. You can check it out in our playlist. So without any more introductions, let's go ahead and get to it. You can do these really in any order, you know, number uh, 10 through two. But when you get to number one, it is the most important and it's at the top for a reason. So let's get to it. All right, number 10, put all of your testing materials in one place like a backpack or a binder or whatever it is. It is so important when you sit down to test, you're going to be tired, you're going to be exhausted, you have to work, you may have kids, it doesn't matter what it is, you need to take, have all of those things in one place, pens, paper, pencils, calculator, code book, whatever other books, you need to have them in one bag. So when you're tired, you're wore out, you bust that kid out. It's got everything you need. You can't spend 30 minutes looking for your pencils and 30 minutes looking for the calculator, scratching your head and wondering by the time you actually get to studying, you don't get anything done because you spent the whole time looking. So number 10, without fail, you have to have all of your test prep materials in one place. And a good idea is like a backpack. Number nine, tab your code book. So you've got to tab your code book if you're able to do it in your state. Recently, I found out that there are some states that are not allowing you to tab your code book, but somebody commented and asked me a question, you know, what they give you four paper clips and you're allowed to paper clip four places in the code book. And he asked me what, what I, what I would do. I told him the index, um, the annex C, the ampacity table 310.15 V16 and your overcurrent, um, table, uh, 240.6a so with that being said if your state allows you to tab you have to tab your code book it's one of the most important things you can do and you have to learn your tabs like the back of your hand and that goes into practice testing and doing this repetition over and over we're going to cover that in the later steps but if you can in your state you've got to tab your code book number eight make sure that you're testing in the right code cycle now, I know this one seems really obvious, but it's really easy to be testing in the wrong code cycle. So you need to find out with PSI examinations or whoever it is holds your examinations in your state, and you need to find out exactly what code cycle you're testing on and if they plan on switching in the next six to eight months. I really encourage you, if you're not anywhere near the testing, just work on whatever you can get the best material for. I learned in the 08, tested in the 08, and then went and tested in the 11 and took tests um, in 2016, 2017. And the core things that I learned in 08 never changed. Still to this day, I'm in the 2020 building the content for you guys. It's all the same core thing. So don't be super focused on it. If you don't know what cycle you're gonna be in, just focus um, your attention on who, whatever has the most content. Right now, I have the most 2017 content, just use it. It's gonna be the same core things. We're actually going through right now and we're revising for 2020 all of our content, 97% of it's the same. But if you're in that six month period, make sure you're in the right code cycle. Make sure that you're testing in the right code cycle because there are some changes or some new questions that could come up as far as testing goes. So number eight, make sure you're in the right code cycle. Number seven, make sure you know all the books that you are gonna be tested from. You do not necessarily have to go out and buy all of those books, but you at least want to know all the books that you could be tested from. So when you do this, like the NFP 70, which is the safety handbook, it may be 70E. Um, there may be another book you can bring in. If you can bring in an uglies book, it may be, you know, a cheap one that you could, you know, bring in that's extra. You may have to ask a colleague or someone else in your state or maybe the local inspector what they recommend taking in. Some of them have five, six, seven books and you really only need two of them. 
I really encourage you, no matter how many books you can bring in, rely mostly on your NEC. You're taking an NEC test and 90% of the questions are going to be out of that book. You could bomb the other 10%, okay? And if you get those 90% right, you're still going to pass your examination with a winning score. So number seven, make sure you know all the books that you're going to be tested from. This could be in, this is going to be information that you can get from whoever hosts your test. They should have a candidate bulletin that will tell you all the different books that you're allowed to bring in. Okay, let's get to it. Number six, use all the best available learning materials. Now, I happen to think that mine are some of the best, and it's growing constantly and changing and evolving. Is mine not flawed? Absolutely not. Is mine perfect? Absolutely not. Do I care more? That's up for debate. Do I really want to see you win more and am willing to do whatever it takes to bring you the best content? We'll find out. But get all the best study material you can. Do not spend your time super deep in all of the different potential things that you could possibly be studying on i really encourage you guys and we're going to talk about this in the future steps get yourself some different practice tests and start studying around those questions because you can get so lost in all the other things that you're not even studying and you're spending all this time not even focused on what you're actually going to be tested on that's why i like to think that the 10-week program cuts through all the crap okay we don't we don't give you any fluff. We don't give you any bull. Every single thing in the 10-week program, you could and probably will face on your test. So don't be studying a bunch of things that you don't need to be studying, all right? Focus only on things that are going to be on the questions and, or excuse me, questions that are going to be on the test and focus on the type materials that are going to be on your test. So use all the best available learning materials, but don't be focusing in any areas that are not teaching you how to answer the questions. If you're an electrician, you've been doing this, you've been studying, you're learning theory, you're learning all the different things in the field. Right now, you're focusing on practicing your test. And that is going to be based around the type questions. So you get the questions and then you start to learn what you need to be studying about. If you take our free 10 week program, it's going to cover 95% of the types of questions that you're going to be facing. And if you're going for higher, um, you know, higher licenses, it's going to teach you the, the core things that you have to know in order to be able to apply it to larger load calculations and larger things. All right. And that was number six. Number five. Make sure you set yourself a time and place that you can focus. This one is super important. When I was getting my original license, I had three kids, maybe, and one on the way, okay? And the kids were two, three, five, and, you know, one on the way. And I know all about working, you know, 40, 60, 80 hours a week while studying and everything else. This one also links back with having all of your study materials in one place, like a backpack. You've got to set yourself either cues or anchors of when you're going to study. An anchor is a fixed time that you're going to study. At 8.15, and you may have to adjust this. Life is all about adjustments and corrections. At 8.15, I'm going to study every single night. I bust the book out. Have your girlfriend, wife, whoever, encourage you, cheer you on. Say, hey, for this next 45 minutes, I'm just unavailable. I'm out here getting it, trying to you know, better our family and better our future. Or set it up as a cue. Okay, I don't know what time I'm going to be eat dinner, but right after dinner, the next thing that I do is I go and I practice test or right after my shower after dinner, I go and practice test. Doesn't matter what time it is. That's a cue. Anchors are fixed times in life. Cues are things that just come after. So set it up where you do it at the same time every single day. Set yourself up a time and a place so you can focus. Number five. Number four. And this counts for the last 10 days of getting ready to take your test. You shut off everything. You stop reading books. You stop reading, um, watching TV. You stop focusing on anything else. You might have to shut off the Facebook. Anything that pulls you away from the grind, you absolutely need to shut it off. And you think... I'm joking, but after you fail a test one or two more times, and let me say a point real quick. There's all these pass first time, this and that. Most guys don't pass first time. I did not pass for the first time on several of my tests, and some of them I did. But the odds, and these are my later tests that I had already done it through, you know, three or four different code cycles, okay, and it just mastered this stuff, a lot of it. 
But listen to me, the last 10 days, you've got to shut off the phone and everything else, and you've got to shut it all out. You need to have the talk with the wife, the girlfriend, whoever, the boyfriend, if you're a girl, whatever it is, and you got to say, listen, these last 10 days is grind time. This is where we're changing our family name. We're changing the legacy. We're out here trying to get it. We're doing things like nobody's ever seen, and we are trying to make this happen. And how I got to do this, and you're just explaining it to them, I've got to take the next 10 days so we can have a better future. And they've got to respect the drip. They just got to. Do you understand what I'm saying? And you've just got to focus and you've got to set down and lay down the law in this area, okay? And you just got to say this is it. And it's also for yourself. You've got to lay down the law on yourself and figure out what it is you want and go get it, okay? Woo! I'm getting excited. That was number four. Number three, write down all of the reasons you're doing this. Massive reasons equals massive power. I want you to sit down and I want you to write down all of the reasons that you're going to get your license. More money, more respect, more power. I'm breaking chains in my family. Nobody has ever been a licensed professional. Nobody's ever done anything with their life. I'm the first one to graduate high school. You write down all of the reasons. Massive reasons are the reason that I get up at 4 o'clock in the morning and I stay up till 10, 11 o'clock at night grinding. Massive reasons. Reasons like you guys. Reasons like my family. Reasons that we did grow up dirt poor and we are breaking the chains and we are changing people's lives you've got to get massive reasons massive reasons equals a massive power number two when you schedule the time to to do your test make sure it's a time a day that you function best often when you schedule with these places they'll let you have an eight a 10 a 12 a two a four Figure out what time of day that you do best, you're the most clear, you're the most focused, either later in the afternoon if that's better for you or early morning before the world hits you and the day hits you. Figure out what time it's best, figure out what time you function best, and then just schedule yourself for that time. If you're not a morning person, don't set your test at 8 a.m., okay? And when you go in there, it's just a test. You're, you're likely going to fail the first time. You're going to go in there and see what it's all about. The nerves are going to get you the next time in or the second or third or fourth time, however many times it takes. Listen to me. The only way you lose is if you quit. The only way you lose is if you quit. You got to say, if I say something, I will do it no matter how many times it takes. Whew, I'm excited. Number two, schedule yourself a time for taking the test. That is the best time of day that you function and you're going to be able to perform at your highest level. All right, guys, with the last one coming up, this is the most important. It's number one for a reason. It is practice, test, practice, test, practice, test. Number one, you have to practice test over and over and over. It's the only way to get in the code book. It's the only way to master the keyword and index process that we teach you. It's the only way to really get confident and ever pass the test. I encourage you to have paper practice tests. I encourage you to use the testing center or something similar. There are so many different resources out there, guys. And I don't know if you guys know the backstory, but when I first started out getting my first license, okay, we were so broke during the recession that I could not afford the $20 it cost to get Mike Holt's three exams. He had 300, I think it was like a 40 or 60, maybe 100 question test, or maybe it was just 100 questions total. And I did not have the $20. I had to borrow it. Now I have invented a test that I sell for 99 cents. It's three 40-question tests. It's a PDF that you can download with the answer keys, and it's 99 cents. Whew. Also, I built the testing center. It's very inexpensive. You can buy a one-year membership for $49, or you can get a lifetime, which is forever, the rest of your life. As long as this program exists, you have lifetime access to this and everything we ever build on the Electrical Code Coach platform. If you need help with anything, you can call me and let me know. But you guys have got to practice test practice. You will not pass your test without practice testing, period. It's the only way to become really good. You've got to master these principles. And it's flipping through the book and getting familiar with the pages and and how to reason and how to use logic to find the questions. You've got to practice test. All right, guys, this was number one. I hope you liked the top 10 exam prep tips. Please like and subscribe. If there's anything I can do to help you in life or business, please just let me know. Email me at electricalcodecoach at gmail.com. Let's get to it.